I just got warmed up with some Federcairn Fjord. I have a clean glass and I have plenty of water to drink. Thing is, um, yeah, welcome to the Secret Spirits Scotch Whiskey Advent Calendar 5th edition, day number 22. I think we can go right into it, right about here. We'd be looking for a number 22 today. Number 22. It must be that one on the right, second from the top. There it is, right there. And there's not many left. Another symmetrical pattern. Not looking at the label once again. Bring it over here with all the other ones. And we'll do it. Well, here goes. I'm going to open this. Oh, don't be a pain. I think I got it. Okay. Oh, this one opens up. Good. I have here the clean glass and I have here the sample. Put the bottle sideways and let it drain. What can I tell right away upon looking at this? First of all, there's probably some kind of sherry cask influence just going by the uh, by the color. It has a kind of reddish, burgundy-ish um, color. With golden highlights. What else can we tell? Got legs. Yeah, got legs. They're moving down slowly. Got nose. Yes, Sherry. Quite a sherry. Nothing distinct yet. Just a general sherry. I'm not beginning to pick out the individual fruits yet. There's sort of a prunish, raisinish dark dark fruits but not dry getting figs dates raisins blackberry And some spices, nutmeg maybe. Something malty as well. Well, nutmeg. So it's spicy and it's fruity and it's dark. Oh yeah. Malty with nutmeg and fruits. Dark fruits but not all dried up. Complex fruits. Now some 
some vanilla. Some other spices. It's something nutty. Grape juice. Berries. Blueberries. Blackberries. little bit of a nip to it, like, a, like an alcohol nip. This reminds me a lot of like a Glenn Farkless 105 or an Aberlore Abunad. This nose is exquisite. I could keep on keep on nosing this for quite some time. The fact that the fruits and the and so on on the nose aren't very distinct. They seem to be blended together as if it was a whole bunch of different elements come together to make one hybrid fruit from all of them. Because of this, this could have some considerable age. And seeing as we are getting towards the end of the Advent calendar, I would not be surprised if this was really old. What tips me off is, whoa, what happened there? Hmm. I hope it's okay. The amplifier went out for a moment. Mm, strange. Maybe it's a reaction to the wind. It could be windy out there today. It was kind of stormy last night. Oh, what a lovely nose. Vanilla. Oh, that is a lovely nose. A nose like this from from sherry or wine cask. It was just delicious. Well, I think I'm going to taste it before this video gets too long. <laughs> I don't think I've made one from the series that's under 20 minutes. I'd have to check on that, but I'm sure they're all over 20. Oh, you know, I thought Secret Spirits was holding out on us when it came to sherry casks. I only recall maybe one that I've tasted so far that was a sherry cask. This has all the tingling on the sides and the tip of the tongue of high ABV. I also taste the sherry. And the sherry tastes really good. Mm. 
No. It's a little bit pokey. More so than it was before. Is that what I was getting as a, as a multi note? It seems to have turned into an oak note with tannins and sugars. It's not breaking down into vanilla and, and caramel. It's just like wood. That oak presence with just a little hint of bitterness on the nose. Could also point towards advanced age. And of course, I could be completely wrong on this, but I like to speculate as I go along. Love that. Now for the second sip. The second sip is most important because the first sip is just like a um, uh, icebreaker. Now the flavors should come in better on the second one now that my palate is acclimatized to it. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, there's less of that alcohol tingliness. There's just a general fruit, a fruity taste. I can't break it down to individual fruits. There's some berry, there's some some things like uh, figs, dates, raisins, prunes. Uh, no bitterness though. No bitterness at all. If this is aged in, oh, I'm not going to speculate anymore. I'm going to add some water. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of water to see what that does to open it up. That was one wee drop. One wee drop. Is that going to make a difference? Hmm. One little drop has changed the nose completely, as it seems to do with these high ABV whiskeys. The fruits have gone lighter. Now for the first time I'm getting a, a cherry, which I wasn't getting before. The darker fruits have uh, become quite a bit lighter just with that one little drop of water. Now I'm getting cherry rather than dates and raisins and Berries, blackberries. Oh, that may have destroyed it. It's still lovely, but it's not the same loveliness with that little bit of water. That one tiny little drop. 
Now I'm getting some vanilla. Just a hint, just a wisp. Caramel? No. It's just indistinct fruit that was leaning more towards the plum side before. Now it's leaning towards the cherry side. Nutmeg. Okay, on the on the palate. On the palate with a little drop of water. It seems to have lost quite a bit. This is one delicate whiskey. It was just a tiny little tiny little drop off the bottom of the off, off the bottom of the spoon. It was just now I'm just getting a dry dry finish. Those indistinct fruits are there. They are hanging on. They are hanging on. Hanging on. Very subtle. Very subtle and drying. I'm still getting fruits. Indistinct fruits. I can't say it any other way. Mm. The very slightest hint of bitterness. Do that again. Oh, fruits, just indistinct fruity fruitiness, and I can't pick the fruits apart. Now in the fruits, I'm getting things like cherry, things like orange, citrus, maybe just a hint of lemon too, but the flavors are all blurred together. It will be orange for a bit and cherry for a bit and then blueberry for a bit and and it can't make up its mind which fruit it is because it's a it seems to be a blend of all of them. Wow, that's quite an experience. It's not exactly up my favorite alley, but I can see how uh, someone who loves sherry sherry cask maturation would just do backflips over this. It's nice. It's very nice. It's just not my favorite style. Wait a minute. Now on the nose. Now I'm getting some, some toffee. Some toffee. Oh. After I've had the finish the indistinct fruit finish. Maybe it just needed to sit a little while after that drop of water added to it. I am rushing through this. I mean, we've been going a whole 18 minutes almost. I should learn to take my time and go more slowly. <laughs> Ah. The nose is changing yet again. I was getting some toffee. Now I'm getting some milk chocolate. This is quite delightful. Now the nutmeg again. Oh, 
that is beautiful and subtle. The word smooth is an understatement. Even at a relatively high ABV from what I can surmise. Yeah, it's still got legs. It's still got legs. Legs. Thick, fat legs. Oh, there's a big dilemma about my big leg, Emma. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And there's a big dilemma about my big leg, Emma. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Mama, 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 Emma. I love that song. Frank Zappa at his finest. <laughs> Ooh, strong toffee note. I'm glad I took my time with this one. And now, Strangely enough, the darker fruits that disappeared when I added that drop of water are coming back in the finish. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know what I'm going to ask right now. I'm going to ask, what is this? Oh, toffee on the nose. dark fruits back on the finish and I've almost finished it just nosing it and just tasting it and trying it with one drop of water I could most definitely use a whole bottle of this and if it's a secret spirits release I'm going to be told <laughs> that I can obtain a bottle if I'm fast enough or if enough bottles are available or I don't know What is this? Lost Distillery. Something I have trouble reading. Toby Moore Archivist. The Lost Distillery. It's bottled only at 46%. No wonder it fell apart when I added water to it. Toey Moore Archivist. Never heard of it. And it's a non-age statement. And it's at 46%. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I was totally wrong. <laughs> I knew there was definitely some sherry cask maturation involved with this one. But I thought it had a higher ABV just because it had so much going for it. And it's a blended malt at 46. It's very good. Very complex. Too bad there's almost none left. <laughs> this is the first of those blends in this series that has really impressed me. Most of the blends were, eh, it's a blend. Eh, it's but you see that the blended aspect of it 
make sense because of the indistinct fruits that, you know, if it was a single malt, you could say orange, cherry, pear, apple, grape, you know, like that. And you could go on and say prunes, figs, dates, sultanas, sun-made raisins, and so on and so on and so on. I could do this sometimes with this blend, but most of the time it was indistinct. Mm. Oh, that is beautiful right now. That is just about perfection in a glass. Slunchava. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>